Good afternoon. Today is the 19th day of March 2017. And our continuing series, Interviews with Aurevillians. And today I'm very pleased to have Mona with us. Namaste, Mona. A little bit about Mona from my experience. She is working with Oro University in Surat and has designed the Integral Yoga Center. Uh, she's a marvelous architect and a very refined lady as well. And I've had the honor to work with her on the horticultural aspects. So today we'll hear from her. The first question that we always ask, of course, is how did you first hear of Sri Aurobindo and Mother? Mm -hmm. Or was it Auroville that you first heard about? Yeah, I would say I first heard of Auroville uh, as an architecture student. Uh -huh. I was studying in Ahmedabad in SEPT uh, School of Architecture. And uh, yeah, Auroville was already known there as a concept. And I, many years later, I realized that uh, there was always a photo of mother hanging in my grandmother's house. Oh. And, but we never talked about it. Because uh, it was one of these mothers sitting on a chair. And, you know, as a small kid, you look up and you say, who is this lady, funny lady sitting there? And mm -hmm. she didn't look really Indian. But I never really questioned it. And uh, many years later, I found out that my aunt, who had been also was an architect from MS University, Baroda. And she passed out something in 67 or something as an architect. And she actually came and worked with Roger for six months as oh. an architect. Oh, isn't that Yeah, interesting? she wanted to join the ashram. And uh, then she stayed here and she even got some books from mother, which were signed by mother and all that. And somehow it didn't work out for her. And when I asked her many years later, she had almost like kind of forgotten the whole episode. But what my mother tells me, ah, she didn't like the food there in the ashram, so she, ah. <laughs> so she came. But I don't really believe that. I mean, I think that's only... But anyway, she settled in America now. But she did give me... I did find her books, actually, which oh. she left in India. Signed uh, by mother. Signed by mother and discovered by Popo, very unusually in our cellar after, like, I think in 2000-something, maybe 1999 oh, or 2000. Gosh. And so I have those books now. So I, rem I remember mother's photo as I was a, when I was a kid, but it, nothing about Shabindo or, or I hadn't heard anything. I only knew about Oroville and then slowly when I came here to do my training, then I get, got to know more about them. And how did you decide on architecture for your career? Oh, <laughs> that's, that's what I often wonder, you know, how is one supposed to decide at 16? what one wants At to be. At 16 you started? Yeah, it's very strange because you know, actually you just start already decide in 10th standard, you know, whether you want to do, uh, you know, science or commerce or art, like more or less you have to decide. And then in in 11, 12, you already have to know. So, you know, you're about say 15, 16. Hmm. You have to know what you want to do. So you have to either decide biology or, you know, if you want to go for engineering or you want to go for arts. You have to take this, there are three streams, commerce, science, and arts, you have to decide. Mm. In my case, it was slightly different because I was studying in Delhi, and I could decide between biology and technical drawing. And uh, since I'm, a, you know, my, as you know, my surname is doctor, and a lot of my, all my almost my whole family is doctors. And oh. yeah, so my grandfather, my great grandfather was a doctor and all my uncles and nephews and oh. um, uh, cousins are all doctors. So my mother, whose sister was a doctor, they didn't want me to be a doctor. <laughs> so she said, no, you should never be a doctor as a woman. If you're a doctor, you, 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 you'll have to marry a doctor and then you'll, you'll you know, have no social life. You'll, you'll be always busy with your career. Mm -hmm. so, and she, and because the other sister was an architect and I was good at drawing and you know, I was oh. kind of artistic. And so they thought it was a good line to go for. So I took technical drawing instead of biology in 11th and 12th in Delhi. Uh, in Delhi? Yeah, in Delhi Public School. I was studying for two years. And so when I came back and wanted to apply for engineering or architecture, you know, or other, uh, like NID, National Institute of Design, I had no choice in, almost in, in Gujarat because in Gujarat, if you don't have uh, biology, you can't do engineering. And I had not taken biology. I had taken technical drawing. 
So my choices were very limited. I could go to NID, I could go to architecture, or I could go to Bits Pilani or things like that. Anyway, so I applied to NID and to architecture in SEPT and uh, an MS University and a couple of, there were not so many choices like today. I mean, it was much, much less. And uh, luckily I got into architecture and was it difficult to get in? Oh yeah, it was a big competition. Oh. I think that time there were like 30 seats and there were 900 applications. And then from oh. that, I think so, but I'm, but something like that. And then I know 60 were called for interview, personal interview. So we had to do three tests, three days tests, all kinds of, you know, we had to draw. I remember things like draw a parrot's foot and a peacock's foot or something. Oh. <laughs> so we had to see if we had a scale you know, how a, a claw mm -hmm. of, a, of, a, mm -hmm. of a bird looks or a pressure cooker and something else or how does a pressure cooker work, you know, make a drawing of that, all, yeah. all kinds of things. Or still, still life, they put some cubes and we had to draw them. And then eventually there was an interview in, in SEPT in, in the school. And I remember I went with my big, big paintings. I was so embarrassed you know, going there with all these oil paintings. And we had to sit before six, seven people. Mm. And they interviewed us. Yeah, and then they selected 30. And I, I was considered, as, a, as an outsider, I wasn't considered Gujarati because I studied from Delhi public, uh, Delhi school. So it was a, a central board. I was in Gujarat board. So there were limited seats for... Oh. You know, so it was quite tough, but I... But coming back here, yeah, how does one decide? I don't know. I was just very lucky, I think. And I, I think architecture is like one of the best, uh, at least for me, uh, a beautiful profession. Because it just, it just combines so many things and it gives you so many possibilities to do, to combine philosophy, you know, psychology and art and mathematics, science, you know. It's like, it's, it's wonderful. It's it's never-ending education, discovery. I remember we talked the other day about Goethe's quote. Oh, yes. So Goethe is of our famous uh, architecture's frozen music, right? Yes. So that's, yeah. That was the first year in, in Sept. It was like all over the place. It, there were certain things which were like very set. So we had to read Hermann Hesse. Uh -huh. And we had to know this famous quote. And, you know, certain things which were kind of in, inculcated by the senior, not by the teachers. You know, we heard all these from people around oh. the students. Yeah, and, and I remember writing it on my board, you know, but never really understood what it meant until 20 years later when I actually experienced, you know, doing a building and I realized how it's a piece of music if you, if you find, it's a, it's a rhythm that you build into your, you know, with the cottage restaurant, like I said. And that was, that was a real grace. I mean, I really felt Cottage Restaurant was the, one of those projects which where, yeah, I felt I was working for Mother, you know, <laughs> because she started that. Yes, that, yes. Uh, I knew Gambatram. Yes, I, I also, I think I've seen them because 1987 when I first came, I think they were still there, the brothers. I'm not sure, mm. or, or maybe not. And, but I remember going to that old place, you know, sitting there on the top with all the crows yes. and oh, yes. under the trees. And my, so my, always, I always say my biggest compliment I get for that building is when they say, oh, I, we remember the old cottage when we go there. <laughs> because uh, <laughs> I tried to make you, sure. You kept that. Yeah, I, that I, feeling. yeah I wanted that, uh, you know, on the terrace. And then I said, yeah, the crows must also come, you know, <laughs> because there was so much a part of being now, there. When you graduated, hmm. what did you do after that? Oh, no, before graduation, actually, Auroville already, you know, kind of hit me. Oh. So it was in 87, during my third year that we have to decide where we want to intern. So we have to do six months of internship in any office. Uh, so that was like seventh or eighth semester, seventh semester. So um, we have to attend semesters in total. So, that, and so, so in the sixth semester, it happened in December 86 that we had a, National Association of uh, Students of Architecture, which is a very large convention. Now it is like 3,000 students. At that time, it was much less. But architecture schools from all over India would come together and they would have mm -hmm. a student program. But there are a lot of trophies which were prestigious and you know, named and where after. Where would you meet? Every time in different schools. Oh. So uh, SEPT, you know, School of Architecture there, we, we didn't, usually we don't participate because it, it clashes with our curriculum and our exams and all that. But this particular year, 86, we did participate 
and I was one of the you know team of students who did, who came to to Chennai. It was in in Anna University, Chennai, and um, yeah, and then Laurie Baker had come there. You know, the famous uh, English architect who was living in Kerala, and um, there, it, he became also very famous because he introduced a lot of low cost methods and you know really it was he was working a lot with the government and doing housing for for poor people etc so he was there and I was doing a lot of that time I was doing electives which were low cost and I was very much into this yeah you know doing something for the for the poor and so I had done so I, I talked to him and I said I would like to intern with you and oh. he was already like quite old it was 86 he must have been maybe 80 or less little bit less than 80 so he said, no, no, I'm not taking trainees anymore. And then just then some of his older students came and they had count, got photos of Popo's work from, from Auroville in vaults and domes, which he was building at that time oh. in Auroville. So he was showing and then he said, yeah, why don't you go and work with Popo Pingal? You know, he's uh, also doing low cost. And he showed me some photos. And, and I'd heard Popo's name because he had already published his book on rural India which was rammed earth housing for villages in, in India. And uh, it had already come to my school library and we had been recommended it as a as course for as course uh, reading for the semester before that because that semester was, uh, we had a Gandhian school to design. Uh, so we had gone to the villages and we had lived there and we had to design. So the, the, the professors that had well, recommended. You lived in the villages for yeah, a Yeah, for a week. We went I and see. visited a school in oh. Vedchi. It was, we all had different, like, different zones in Gujarat. So we all went to different places, like groups of eight or ten. Mm -hmm. And I was in this uh, place called Vedchi, which was a Gandhi ashram and a school there. And so I, um, I, I so they had recommended this book. So I had heard of his name as Popo Swami, of course, not as Popo Pingal, or, because mm -hmm. that's what's written on the book. And uh, so I, oh, that sounded good. And I said, yeah, we're just here in Chennai and, you know, I should go there. I had this feeling I must go to Auroville and mm. talk to Popo since I'm here all the way, you know. South India is far for us, no, <laughs> from when yes, we come from yes. Gujarat. Yes. So, so I convinced, I remember I started convincing a friend because I couldn't go alone. I mean, I wasn't so comfortable, you know, not knowing the language sure. here. So I started convincing my one friend of, of mine from 9 o'clock in the morning and 12 o'clock she agreed that we'll go to to, to uh, uh, Pondicherry. And that la a person who got the photos, he said, it's very easy, you just take the bus from here and hmm. you get down at Auroville and you can meet Popo's living right there and you can meet him. So it sounded very, you know, easy. Yeah. So at 12 o'clock we were standing at the bus stand and took the bus around 4 o'clock we reached in, in Promise. And then, you know, that time there was that old Tindivanam road. Right. With all the tamarind, beautiful. Uh, I tree. lived there in Promise. Oh, you, yes, of when course. When I first came, Mother right. put me there. Oh, know. yeah, it was one of the few early communities yes. that were there and designed by Roger. So I I landed there in the middle of nowhere. The driver said, this is Auroville. And I said, well, Auroville, like, I couldn't believe it because, you know, in all the photos, I mean, we had seen the drawings of this galaxy and I expected something circular. Oh, you were expecting, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because we don't know. So we, I thought there'll be something, walkways and promenades. <laughs> anyway, so this was Auroville and then we walked in there and then we found, luckily it just happened as is, you know, destiny. So then uh, Popo had already left Promise in, in 1980. So it was six years already before that he was not living there anymore. But luckily on that day, his son Miro had come to play with some of the children there because he was brought up with them. He was growing up with them. So once in a while, Popo would bring them for a day. They would play there. So that day, Miro had come there. So he was going to come and pick him up. <laughs> so that's how it is. Wow. And then I landed here slowly, I like came back and we did our... So I applied to him for training with this friend. And that's how... So it was all about architecture. I mean, there was nothing about Mother and Shabindo or anything mm -hmm. in the beginning. Yeah. But there was something about Auroville that was very appealing to me from the, you know, as, as you lived here. I lived six months at that time in Bharat Nivas in a little student's guest house that was there. Oh. And uh, slowly, yeah, of course, Popo played a big role because often we would be sitting, we, would, we did an archaeological dig with him, excavation. Oh. And evenings he would be sitting there and telling us all his stories, and of course he was loving and a very interesting entertainment for us. <laughs> and so it was very slowly, I you know, Auroville grew on me, and 
I think one of the nice times I experienced was at the amphitheater when there was bonfire because we were there for 15th of August. And then I came back on the 1st of January or so. And that was really amazing experience to see this, this energy there. It was much smaller than what it is now, but it was very special to, to be there and, you know, with this fire and Mathe Mandir in the background and all this international, the international aspect of Auroville actually uh, hit me before, you know, the whole philosophical and, uh, and spiritual mm -hmm. aspect of it. And I really enjoyed my time because I, I yeah, I was, I was not brought up in a very orthodox family, so it, it was very easy for me to, uh, yeah, we traveled a lot as a kid. I was in Kenya for four years and Delhi, as like I said, I studied, so I moved many places. Yeah. So it was very, and we were not very like orthodox, religious, you know, kind of family. Like I said, my grandfather was a doctor, so. Yeah. He had already moved away from a lot of rituals and very simple. We are Jains actually, born a Jain. So mm -hmm. Jainism doesn't believe in a lot of rituals and it's very austere religion yes. in that sense. Yes. So we, so that helped, of course, you know, I was very open and very, I enjoyed this international atmosphere and le letting to know new people and experiencing everything that Auroville could give in mm. those days. Now, what was the year? I was 87 when I stayed six years, six Eight, months. 87. Yeah. And when did you come back? So then I, of course, I had to go back and I wasn't sure ah. if I'll come back. But uh, then I did, you know, it kind of, when you go back and you see the, you know, the difference when you go back. And then happens to a lot of students who go back, you know, they can't stop talking about Auroville in their schools. <laughs> Everybody knew that, oh, we had been to Auroville and we were all the time like in Auroville, it's like that. So anyway, eventually I took my final year's uh, project here. We could decide where our project was. So I did a project on the on the on the Gandhi statue. You know that whole area with in Pondi, Gandhi statue, Nehru statue, a rejuven rejuvenation of that area with that duan. You know those two circular buildings, the lighthouse and all that. So that was my final year project, and so for, I had to come back for that and do a lot of research. And of course, I was happy to be back in Auroville. And then I did my. Thesis, we have a diploma thesis, which is a research thesis. Uh, in SEPT, it's a research thesis. So I could decide my topic and I decided to do it on Matri Mandir and the Great Pyramid and comparing the form, structure and energy of, of the two buildings. Oh my gosh. Proportions, yeah, that was amazing. And then I also got a little grant from, from Center of Indian Studies at that time through Aster because I had to find excuses to come back here and I convinced my parents. So this is a good excuse, I'm getting a scholarship, you know. <laughs> so that, yeah, I stayed that time a little longer. And yeah, and then I came back in 19, after I finished my studies, I came back in 1990 to work then finally in Auroville. And you stayed? Yeah, I stayed. Since then? Yeah, but it was still, it's, it's, not, so, it's not so simple. Of course, you, you think, you know, ideally in your mind, everything is, you know, but it's a process to join Auroville. I mean, to actually yes. join Auroville yes. with everything that you can give. So it took time. I mean, in 1990, it came. And then in 92, we built our house, Popo and I, together, our house to, in two years. And I did Udavi School with also with Popo, which was another project mm. we worked together. But then I really wanted to go to Europe because, <laughs> because in architecture, we study a lot of European architecture. And it's our big idea, you know, and all the masters are there. And, uh, and it was quite, yeah, and then, of course, Germany, because of Popo, I had some contact to some, some uh, places or organizations where I could apply for, for scholarships. And I found a very good course, which was on appropriate technology and extension skills. So it was, it was, um, it was a quite a, uh, interesting course because looking for South-South cooperation rather than North-South cooperation. And it was building people. I was the only architect in that, in that course in that particular year. And I was also the first Indian and the first woman to join that course because mm. it was just started in 88 by one professor who was really very forward looking and had a vision to kind of, he thought this is what is the world needs, not this, you know, not always people going from the West to the East or, you know, or to the South, but like people coll collaborating, going back to their countries and taking back things from Germany, but using it in their own countries rather than staying, you know, in, in the West because he wanted people to go back. And 
So anyway, I was the only architect there. It was a very interesting course. It was to build project managers for development uh, institutions like GTZ or, you know, SCAT or all these kind of institutions which were giving money to the, to the so-called developing countries at that time. So I did, I got a, I got a full scholarship for that from mm. German Academic Exchange Service, which was really good. I had six months of German, completely five hours of German in a very good institute, Goethe Institute, which is like the best place to Goethe. learn German. Yes. Goethe Institute, yeah. Yes, yes. In Bremen. And then my course was in, in Flensburg. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so that was two years. And then after about, so in 95, I came back to Auroville. Uh, after finishing my master's and I also did my master's thesis on architecture then on building biology which is something also another special thing that I learned in Germany and can you which, talk just a little bit yeah, about that? Uh, so I was already I already knew a lot about many things that were, were being taught there because I because I practiced in Auroville for two years already with Popo so I, I was aware about solar energy and wastewater and you know earth buildings and how but that's what was being actually taught there to these multidisciplinary people uh, including you know I could then develop I could calculate little my uh, micro hydro turbines and I mm. could calculate I could knew I knew how to make a blade of a small wind turbine and because people were coming from Nepal from South from uh, I had friends from Sudan Palestine from Peru you know so everybody was very different. So they, they gave us one year of like kind of multi uh, kind of speciality in different fields, including intercultural le learning, um, including skills of how do you create a project, you know, how do you write a proposal and how do you keep timelines. It was like very, mm -hmm. very, very um, kind of broad. And then the last six months, we could actually select our topic and do a detailed thing. So there I decided to do on building biology, which is, yeah, which is in short, it is like, how do you find the balance between man, nature and economy through when you're as an architect or when you're building, you know, and how does building in, in the whole urban fabric, it's not just one building, it's like, how, how do we at policy level, at, uh, at city level, at individual level, how does one, how does it affect our well-being? As human beings, so the building is like uh, um, you know the third skin. Like we have our skin and our clothes, and then the building which envelops us all the time. So we are you know it's important how we build. So it was all talking about all kinds of. It included physics, biology, chemistry. It included indoor air quality. Ooh. It in, included electromagnetic fields. It was way. I mean, for India, it was now it's become quite important because. At that time, 25 years ago, I don't think anybody was talking or very few people were talking about um, things like static, electrostatic, you know, materials that create, you know, electrostatic fields or uh, electromagnetic fields with all these gadgets and microwave and, you know. So it was a big thing. I mean, I really enjoyed learning and it was a lot of physics also. You could actually measure uh, fields, you know, in volts per meter and you had instruments and you could see how human beings are affected because we are all also electron, we are actually also a, a kind of a, say small cell or, you know, because we're made of a lot of water and our electric, uh, we are, uh, stimuli is all uh, electric impulses, no? Like we are like a little, we are direct current batteries actually in, in, in the sense. Otherwise, our, you know, how do you, how, if I want to move my hand, I need to, you know, send this impulse to the brain and that's all with little electric, you know, very small. Yeah. So that's that that's affected by when you have all all these gadgets around you, and so I, I mean that so it was quite for me it was it was a big thing I I knew a little bit about it through Popo because he had some friends who were doing it, but like this I could really go into into depths of that and then when I came back, I of course applied it to my architecture you know whatever I was doing as much as possible. My dream when I came back was like to start an, you know, Institute of Biobiology in India because they didn't have anything. But everything was in German and I had oh. to translate everything into English. You became fluent in German? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, was, I, I see. was very fluent because, yeah, I was... Well, when, of course, you were popo also. And, yeah. yeah, yeah, but living in Germany is the best way That's to the learn. the best way. And like I said, all the literature was in German. Mm -hmm. So I had, and I wrote my master's thesis in English because I knew I wanted people in India to read it. 
so i had to translate a lot of it into english so it was a lot of work but in the end yeah so it was there but i had this dream but when i came back i realized uh, i can do it i tried a lot in oroville you know i would put something in the news and notes and about electromagnetic fields and how it affects us and but then in eventually i realized that i can either do my practice and and build and build with these principles or i can build up an institute but i can't do both it would be very difficult to so i decided to build because building is also addictive you know <laughs> and building on on the site like i remember my first project and i was very lucky in oroville because it it really gave me all the opportunities that i you know to to kind of whatever i i aspired to you know i got those kind of projects so my first projects were domes and vaults in 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 mud bricks and i found the clients and i would say only solar energy you know and otherwise we don't build for you and <laughs> but people were ready and i got slowly and i remember you know doing those first uh, buildings where it really was very interesting that it gave me all these opportunities to to build in oroville so i applied all those principles there and i remember the first uh, time you know when i drew all these drawings and then you go to the site and then you see it being built yeah i mean it's it's What just a feeling, huh? yeah it's yeah. it's really a feeling it's like it's a powerful feeling actually yes. because and you know people are going to occupy those buildings and people are going to live their lives in it and and you can you have a chance to influence it to some extent so it's quite yeah and i i remember i would just love to be on the side i had to really pull myself to go back to the table to the drafting table you know but yeah it still remains to a great extent i still enjoy going to the site you know it's, i'm always amazed that i'm not there and things are still going on <laughs> and it's always nice to come back and see oh what's happened you know so no in that sense i think orv has been just uh, i i really i call it my karma kshetra now you know it's it's really my place of 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 being and growing and it's it gives me everything that i think everything that i am today i'm more a lot of it that i am today not everything because a lot of the baggage you still carry from from your you know from your family and from sure. your past but a lot of it is orable really i mean everything and it's it's been an amazing journey to to grow and to see and, and it's never ending you know it's it's very challenging i think it's not easy to live in orable i think uh, you you need to be very strong you need to have a lot of faith and a lot of trust you know and and you really have to work on yourself because it doesn't allow you to 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 rest i mean it, it's to become comfortable <laughs> the moment you become a little comfortable the next the next uh, challenge is already there waiting for you so but uh, yeah I, i i still think it's the best place it's a privilege to live in oroville when did you start your little firm oh <laughs> Well, I actually didn't I never thought of it as a firm and I still don't. Ah. <laughs> I'm always actually it took me years, you know, to say the word client in Oroville. Hmm. Yeah, I just couldn't <clears throat> I never saw it because I, maybe because I was influenced I mean I I see how the the older like you know like Piero and Popo and Helmut all these people who were there before us yeah. how they worked, you know, and how they yeah. built up slowly over years with nothing, you know. and so i never never saw uh, architecture as a as a when people say it's like what what do they call it they call it it's a it's an it's a unit or it's a commercial activity or they say something i I've, i'm always very like no i always want to say no we're a service i'm 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 i really a don't service. feel that i'm i'm doing i don't think that we're doing commercial architecture i really think that we i mean building for oroville so i am Of course there is a give and take there is a transaction of money but that's that's not the foreground it's not in the foreground so actually i know we i mean popo and i have shared an office for 15 years but we had our own projects and i we never had a name for for our firm actually nobody had names for their yeah. firms so in the beginning so it's just a group of people yeah and it was like there was no <clears throat> need to have a name for mm-hmm. your firm But the thing is that I remember the first time we got a card printed it was because we wanted to go to France and uh, and we wanted to enter Lasco you know these famous painting these cave paintings which are in north of, of France or no middle of France yeah. Lasco and they're very old 
And so Popo thought if we had a little little card with our names and, you know, Auroville Museum of Archaeology, <laughs> maybe it would be easier to get in there. So I remember we got some cards, silk screen printed in, in, uh, with Suzanne in Lumiere. You know, nobody was making cards. In that time, there's no digital, you know, there was no yeah, computers. Right. And so we had to get a silk screen print done. And, and then so we had these first cards. And that, even that time, there was no name. It was just Auroville Museum of Archaeology and our names and architects. That was what was written there. Eventually, um, I think when we build and then just as a fun, you know, like we would call, we, because Popo likes to give names for everything. So we got, it was called Nakshbandi, Studio Nakshbandi. It was called just Nakshbandi, actually. And um, Nakshbandi is actually a, um, a Sufi sect of designers. So mm. that was a nice name, but it was just because we had to write something on the drawing. So we did that. And eventually, when I decided to make my own office, uh, because I I decided I realized that you know building living and working in the same house and 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 it was small. We just could have one trainee or two trainees maximum. And I realized it was getting all too tight. And then I wanted a computer. I kind of got a computer because my father uh, died and he had a computer and it was lying at home for years. So my mom said, "I oh, just you know let's get rid of it." I said, "No, no, I'll take it." So I brought a computer here, and there's no place, you know, to keep. We hadn't designed for anything like that. I mean, everything was 12 volt DC yeah. in our house, ah. you know, because of electromagnetic <clears throat> fields. And <clears throat> and Popo was like, ah, oh, no, this is. He wouldn't. He doesn't even like the aesthetic of, you know, having those beautiful drafting tables and then suddenly having this <clears throat> monitor there. <laughs> so I was like, oh, trying to fit in there, and then I realized it's not going to work over years. And then I said, yeah. okay, I need a place. I knew that at some point I would like to have my own studio, and so I, this was, I think, now 2008 when I finally built. Mm. And yeah, and then then I had to give it a name because by then Auroville had changed and everybody had names, and you know more and more we had cards, and you know so mm. then it got stuck. Studio Nakshbandi. How did you first meet HP? Oh. And get involved with Oro University. HP. Actually, HP uh, came through Suman. I don't know if you know him, Suman Kachru. He was um, he was one of like a, what um, he was. I think he's kind of site engineer, like uh, or or he was the engineer who was kind of involved in it, and he was handling a lot of things, like you know, getting all the permissions and getting people on, and also checking everything, like what uh, Saumil does no, now. What Saumil yeah. does? Okay. And he was already in touch with Bimal because Bimal Patel was doing that design for the total layout for the, the 67 acres or for, the university. for our university, yeah. the master plan. Mm -hmm. And um, I think Suman, I think he is from SEPT, if I'm not mistaken. He studied SBST, like he's studying, uh, he studied at the School of Building Science and Technology. I studied at School of Architecture, but it's all the same campus. Oh. So he, yeah, he kind of, he, I guess he must have heard of me. Or I, they knew, of course, the Orville connection was there. But since I was from School of Architecture Sept as well, and you know he was from there, and he might have heard of. So he actually introduced me to HP. He brought me in, uh, actually, in, into. And then, mm. of course, HP. That time he was also very not coming so often to Orville. I think. No. So I know I remember because many things I would say, oh, you know this, and you know, you know, no, I don't know. I said, okay, we go there, we we'll go there. So I remember there were many times. When I would, you know, go with HP somewhere or the other, you know, and say like meet people to see something, meet people to yeah, see something. Yeah. yeah. So slowly, yeah, yeah HP was uh, was quite. It took some time to kind of start the project, and you know, you, you never as an architect is always like I always say it's a juggling game, you know, because you're always a juggler, so you never know which which project is going to actually take off and not. So when when they first approached me. Of course, I, I said yes, but you know, it took me some time, or it took us some time to really take off with the project. And was it specifically for the Integral Yoga Center, or yeah. was it other aspects? No, no, it was always, and always I was very there. happy actually. That's what I uh, with Sumanth, I think, or was it before? I mean, I, I think when I looked at the totality of the project, and I looked at all what they wanted to do there, and you know, and I I came up with this idea that. Uh, you know, like there's so many aspects to this whole um, to this whole Aura University, and because it's based on integral yoga, uh, so I it's like I drew up a simile or like you know metaphor of like how 
it actually uh, caters to all the four us like you know to the mental to the vital the physical the psychic aspects of 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 the being in in the campus so you know there is the the academic part you know which is dealing with the whole that mental part and there is the physical because they have a lot of sports and activities and you know so i called uh, the my center what the integral yoga center i call i always thought this is like the psychic of that center of you know this is the, the is. psychic yeah and then yes i actually because i think it's a very interesting project because it actually tries to bring you know mother it puts madan shobindo in the center of this oro university and it it and it it allows for a space um, which has which has a lot of functions but actually in a sense it also has um it's a place which can be also very multi you know it can be free space it's a, like a no space kind of you know it can it can absorb everything and it, and it doesn't have to and it, so it's very understated i always felt this center has to be uh, very sublime and very very subtle it has to be very understated it doesn't have to shout for attention quiet. yeah very quiet and also it fits with me and with my being and my personality it's not I, it's not to you know do a like I I don't like to do buildings that are you know just look at me you know like that it's it's nice to discover things so I I, I that's how the project developed you know and 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 I think the the program is quite interesting because what I loved was that it had these meditation centers so these two kind of we we evolved a lot of the things together I mean now it's five years ago so if you ask me all yeah. the details I might have forgotten yeah. already some things but. basically the idea of the satsang was there and then the idea of this cafe this what i call the zen cafe or it's it's a place where you know you can meet people but it's not a it's a very quiet space again uh, and that's where that's where you see the where i hope to see the power of architecture because if you if you manage to build a space that automatically quietens down the people that doesn't encourage them to talk loudly or you know it's a place where of contemplation and then there are these two meditation places one is like a you know like this cave type of meditation and one is the nature meditation and i for me it was a privilege or it is a privilege because i was kind of thought of matri mandir as as you know i kept it before me as an ideal when i designed I so the yeah the, those caves are completely those with the petals in matri mandir the uh, i i kind of kept that and but he gave me like he wanted this four powers of the mother so i developed it along those lines and mother's given actually for each uh, each power like ma lakshmi ma saraswati she's given a color to it yes and so i did so i would like to you know bring that into this four um, chambers now that we have which and yeah and then the other one of course in nature that's easy for me because i love to do landscaping yeah. as you know and i think I think architecture without interior and landscaping is like half finished work. And you know if if you have if you're lucky that I mean we try for every project that we do that I I at least try to incorporate it but if you're lucky we 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 managed to finish it well. So so that was very beautiful because with the water and yeah and every, so as you know they changed the site four times and every time I had to revise and uh, you know it's been a long process but I must say it hasn't been Now, in the end, I feel it just got better, you know. Mm. With patience, we need to just deal with, you know, the time. It takes a little while because yeah. every time you leave the project, you come back into it. It takes a while, and you forget sometimes. Some, but on the whole, I think it's it's uh, it's actually led to a better solution. And now it's happening. Yeah, and then <laughs> it's I I'm really looking forward to that that it should start soon, you know. and once it started yeah. i think it will take out but they've been very nice i think hp has been uh, has been a good client till now very easy to work with very very flowing listening and it's very 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 comfortable like when he wants to make a point he does but um, generally it's been very harmonious which is great i um, want to ask you a bit about orville today and mother and sri arbindo okay and orville's relation to the yoga hmm you'll get only one my perspective of course <laughs> so it's a difficult question um because i i i think it's difficult to judge 
for anybody, I mean, any one of us. But one can only judge from oneself, I mean, or what one experiences, because otherwise it's not possible. Mm. So you want to know Auroville today and Mother and Shabindos and their place or their relationship to what is happening in Auroville t yes. today. Like, how does it? And you might talk about yourself also a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So, I, I, I see, I, like I said, you know, always to live in Auroville is an act of faith. So, if you really live there and if you really consecrate yourself to that place, which is already a rarity in today's life, today's world, I think. Yes. It's very, that's one, that's one of our strong points, I think. Because I think people who have come to Auroville have come intentionally. And uh, they have made a choice. Um, of course, people make a choice also to go to New York or to London or to Delhi yeah. or whatever. But very often it's it's because of work or it's because of family or something. But this is different. This is like for a for an ideal that is higher than themselves. You know, something that they can see that the world needs. And it's very high the ideal of Orville. And it takes you years to understand. I think I'm just kind of beginning to scratch what what that ideal means. You know, how, how do you how do you actually Put it in your life. So in that sense, I think um, all the people who are here in Auroville are somehow, you know, consecrating their lives or their time, you know, to, to Auroville. So that's already quite quite something to have in a place like this. And I think since it is a matter of faith, because we really don't know, we really don't know what what is the right thing. I think you know maybe we are parts of a puzzle, but. We're just 2,700 people when, when we are supposed to be 50,000. So, you know, we have to leave space for all those people who are going to come and who are going to contribute to our will and, you know, going to bring new things. And, of course, we we have to work on ourselves in, in order to make ourselves the instruments, you know, for, for whatever is to come or whatever is there. So, I, in the end, I think it's all about how, how much you can do work on yourself and how you relate that to the collective. Because very often, in, uh, sometimes you just want to, you know, retra retract or just go into your cocoon, you know, and just you're happy to do your sadhana, your yoga, whatever you understand under that, and whatever you're capable of. But that, you, you can't rest in peace like that in Auroville. It, it may be a phase that you need to go through, but eventually you have to connect to the collective. But then again, what is connecting to the collective? I mean, you know, there's so many ways of doing that. It's not, it's not just about going to meetings or being part of some groups or, you know, contributing. There's, you know, there are as many ways as there are people. So I, it's difficult to, to, to say, you know, who's doing what and whether it's right or wrong. I think the longer I live in Oroville, the more I think it's difficult, you know, uh, to, to judge anything from the external. And therefore your question, to say, you know, where is Orville or, you know, with and regard to Mother. I think Mother and Shabida is central to Orville. I, I I don't think that without them we cannot exist. So I'm I'm pretty sure that whatever when many times people ask me like fifty years and you're two thousand five hundred, especially you know, a lot of architects. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but even because that's my circle. But even otherwise a lot of people think, yeah, what what is that, you know? It's like, uh, and then sometimes there are questions, or does, should the government still be supporting such an experiment? And, you know, have, do we deserve it? You know, I always feel that the fact that we have survived 50 years and we are growing and we are attracting people. And, and if you see the am amount of activities that happen in Orville, and it's not just the activities, it's the passion with people work, which people work, you know, everything, each thing that you see in Orville, there is a real passion behind it most of the times I, or i can't say 100% but so that is what makes a difference it's you know it's like it, it's still the it's alive or is alive and it's growing and it's attracting i think that's a miracle 50 years you know i mean you see experiments all over the world where what what happens after 50 years and we we still feel that we're just we're just starting you know we're not and we're not i i personally i don't think i'm i'm not in a hurry to you know, say 50,000, because I, I, I'm I, one of those who believes that the process is as important as the product, or if not more important. So, so in our way, I'm not, I don't think that we should be in a hurry to, I, I mean, people are coming, everybody's doing their bit, and those who feel that they are very good at, you know, 
you know, being external, like, you know, connecting to the external world and, you know, bringing people. Everybody has to find their place. And that's what she said, you know, the yes. right people in the right place yes. at the right time. Yes. And that's, uh, that's divine anarchy probably here. But we haven't yet got there. <laughs> yes. So very often wrong people are in the wrong place at the wrong time. But, um, but things do happen. I mean, and I have a lot of faith there. I, I feel that um, when things are supposed to happen, uh, they do happen. And you have to have that, that faith and, how, and you have to have that commitment and you have to not give up. And I see that. I've seen that in my own life, in my own little way of, you know, being in Auroville. And this is such a, such a lived experience over years. And it's 25 years now. It's, it's not short, but it's, not, it's, it's still the beginning, kind of, to say. But uh, I, I see that whatever is like small things to big things, you know, it's your inner aspiration that counts. And when that is true, then you get all the opportunities that you need to 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 to, to you know to fulfill those or to um, externalize those or to manifest you know <clears throat> and it's in every field, it's in every level it's not just about my work it's about everything in my life you know i really feel that but the point is to know your aspiration that takes a lot of time and to know yourself i think this is the biggest challenge you know the more you know yourself the more clear it is what you need to do. Have the works of Mother and Sri Aurobindo um, been important to you? No, oh, yes, of course. And without that, it's not possible to survive in Auroville, I think. <laughs> to survive in Auroville. <laughs> so I, I really think that... What have you read? Oh, yeah. Or what read, are you reading? I've read, yeah, <laughs> well, right now it's a, it's, it's a crazy time. But yeah, I'm... I'm well, I've read most of, I've read, you know, Life Divine and Synthesis, but that doesn't really count, you know, you can read it mm. three, four, five times sure. and it's not really, it's yeah. about what you take and sometimes you just pick up something and it can be a poem which can just, you know, touch you, Savitri, I mean, yeah. everything, there is a time for everything. I, like I remember for years I couldn't, just wouldn't touch Savitri because I thought, no, no, first time to, I started with the easy things, you know, like whatever, what I thought was easy. So. The questions and answers of mothers easy, and uh, of course all the other things like evening talks with Shyobind or twelve years with Shyobind. That was like easy reading, and it was like so made me so uh, it made it so alive for me, you know. Like Shyobind was just next, you know? <laughs> but and then of course there were all the agendas, and then there were the, the then I did a lot of things with uh, with Dipti. We read a lot of the like foundation of Indian culture, and we read. Mother, mother on this is <coughs> Dipti of last school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dipti Tiwari. Yeah, Dipti Tiwari. We've uh, we've had a we have a little uh, group that we've been reading together since uh, eleven years now, and once a week. And that's been quite long, yeah. But I, yeah, I, I think it's nice to read. And I, I understand. I, I mean, I'm a person who likes. I think the idea of satsang is very interesting and very important. So when you meet in a group, it's a different kind of sharing. And also because we, if you're all from Auroville, it, very often we make a lot of tangents, you know, and it's about what things are happening in Auroville. And each one brings something to the table from their own fields, you know, whether it's be education or architecture or whatever people are working in, you know, and it, that makes it richer. So it's not, it's not like really gossip, but it's more like questions that people bring to the table, you know, how mm. does things work in Auroville and in relation to what we are reading. So it makes it mm. quite rich that way. It's, it's a dialogue, you know, it's not really a one, it's not a one way thing. So that was quite enriching uh, to, to read. But I wanted to say about Savitri, like for example, many years I didn't touch it. And then um, at one point I was going to the chamber to do some duty. And I had a very nice time at like 12 to 1 in the afternoon. This is many years ago. It was very nice with air condition, you know. <laughs> it was hot and nobody would come, almost nobody would come between 12 to 1. And uh, so I, I used to take Savitri to read there. And I don't know what happened, but suddenly it was like, I would just open and I would just, it was like reading prose, you know, suddenly. It was like everything kind of just made sense. It was amazing. So it was like, I think it's something, it has to be an inner inner um, desire or aspiration or something that it just opens, you know. And so it's, but I do find, like I said, I started this thing with Dipti because I requested her because I wanted to do Foundation of Indian Culture with her. 
but one of the things is that a lot of people my friends you know who were a lot of them would say that oh we don't read she you know we can't read you know it's so difficult and you know mother mother is a little bit more accessible but she have been the not and i said how can that be you know we live in oroville and we don't read she have been you know we, i mean where so this is a basic so then we started this group you know like slowly so these are the kind of things that you know also but now i i i'm at a point where i want to read on my own like you know i, I feel so it's it's different yeah. times and yeah. different things yeah. and so yeah reading is uh, i think it's like darshan every day you know you need to do that <laughs> i don't always manage sometimes it's quite crazy with running in an office and doing all the things that we do mm, because or a lot of people do a lot of things so, yeah you hired local people also trained local people architects yeah yeah right i i <clears throat> it started very small so basically in the beginning it was just one or two trainees who would come and but over the years i really feel that uh, yeah i i i wished for it you know uh, i wished that i would have somebody from the local area and somebody who would you know could grow and then you know become part of my office and and it would be interesting and, and actually like i said you know you just have to have a aspiration and it happens so right now i have somebody in the office and he's a local um, he's he's a self made guy he, i think he just did studied till 10th and i'm not even sure he passed 10th but he's been studying he's been working in different architecture firms even he's been to bangalore and he's been to goa and he's, um so he's worked with a lot of architects and uh, but he's from kodakarai and he's worked like maybe 15 years in different firms and he made he's a very good model maker So actually, that's why he was very sought after. I mean, like people mm. wanted him, but then they would always give him just models to make, you know. And so when even I called him in for many models many years ago also. But then I felt that's a pity, you know. Like if he, he must grow through this, he can't just be making models. And he was so good at models, you would just you would give him a little drawing, and he could you know make models on his own. And and quite challenging, quite you know quite uh, interesting how he would think of of all the details and how he wanted to do things. So I started I got him into the office and now I'm now he's here yeah he's working and I'm giving him now he's doing working drawings and I've given him the IYC drawings you know oh. yeah, to do to to do the working drawings because we have to create the whole set from beginning yes. and in the beginning I was like oh should I you know should I give it and so before last week he asked me do you trust me like i can do the working drawings uh. and i said yes okay you try but sometimes you know his his thinking is not like he doesn't think th- things through like that but it's a matter of training you know so yes i am very happy to work with but i tell you the best people that in terms of the contractors that we work with they're all local uh. of course and yeah. these trainees and people they come and go and they come from all over india all over the world in fact i've had people from portugal from london from all different russian girl who worked with me for 2 years but that's that's fine but i think the the contractors who who work with us uh, uh luckily they're all local also the people who work on our sites are still very local they're from the local area if you see this is almost like in big cities it doesn't happen anymore they get migrants to get yeah. and it's such such a yeah. sad thing you know they're not yeah. connected and we are so blessed with such good contractors i mean the people whom i am working with like who did cottage or you know my studio uh and aikido dojo you know these are people who are like locally they're just local people not studied you know uh but they are they are they are, i think they are not only good workers and thinking people but they are good human beings i mean they're it's a pleasure to work with them they're honest they're sincere they enjoy their work and i tell you one of another thing that's so important is they have pride in their work and this is what people lose very often in the cities you know they're just doing it for money but they're not they're not doing it that in the skill that hand you know that that what you do with your hand you have to be proud of in india it's sadly you know we still have this kind of idea which 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 is much more than the cities than in the villages then they're doing something with the hand or maybe also in lot in the villages now with all the media and all that doing something with your hand is like you know considered look down on yeah, yeah. and this is something i learned a lot from popo because he comes from this german you know handicraft he's like a carpenter and before he was an architect so i learned how to how to appreciate the people on the site a lot 
they are my actually biggest partners, you know. I really appreciate them and I always take them on board. I mean, in fact, they take me on board or we take each other on board. But it's a really good working together. Yeah. It's really a pleasure, really. And we are lucky. And I, this is also what I think we have to thank the people who came in the beginning. People like, you know, all these people who came in the earlier years. And not only the architects. There were a lot of other people who were not architects who were building with the hands, you know. Or in all these people like Johnny and you know who, who built uh, capsules. I mean, so many people in the green belt who built on their own, and they they made a whole uh, kind of culture of of working, which is you know work dealing with matter, bringing it to a perfection, you know, and not giving up, uh, trying to innovate with what is there, simplicity, you know, not you know, and they really worked just for the for them, you know. It was not about publishing, and it was not about climbing a ladder and your and your career and all that didn't exist. It, unfortunately, that is a bit like quite prevalent now in Auroville. I mean, wow. you know, when you ask me about Auroville today, but I, I, I think that's also just a phase. I, I don't think that it's going to stay. But yeah, it is right now. It's quite, at least in the architecture circle, you know, it's very prevalent. You get yourself published and your, your you know, projects are here and there and you get awards and and it's okay for a while, you can do it, but in the end you realize it doesn't really get you further. Yes. So yes. in the end you come back to track, <laughs> yes. hopefully. Yes. Yes. But yeah. Do you have any interaction with the ashram? Oh yes, of course, because of my projects. But even otherwise, I think, um, how should I say? First of all, Golconde is my biggest, uh, Golconde, when I stayed first time in Golconde, it was like, it was transformational for me, that week when I stayed in Golconde. Uh, so for me, that's ashram. I mean, it, of course, it's mother and it's everything that goes into that building, but it's amazing. Secondly, uh, my whole interaction because of Cottage, the restaurant, and uh, Manojda in particular, uh, because he, you know, he, we had, of course, like every building goes through its, you know, tough times, and we had also a few you know, little uh, problems which we had to solve. And Manushta was always like there, you know. And he's like somehow for me, he's, yeah, he's a person who's very, how should I say in words, it's difficult. But I like his, I just like the way he is as a person, as a human being, you know. And he's carrying so much on his shoulders, probably. But he carries it very lightly. And he's always ready for a smile. I think that's very important that, you know, there is this sense of, you know, you, you, I, I, I think Shyabindu has said something I've written on my table. It says, a God, uh, a God who cannot, who cannot laugh would not have created this world or something like that. You know, yes. that laughter is so yes. important, you know. Yes. So I think uh, that smile and that, that being, which is, you know, there's still this sense of ease, you know, like being the grace of, mm. that I really admire in, in him that. So, yeah, I mean, and there are a lot of friends in the ashram. I, I used to sing, oh yeah, that was one big thing oh, for me. Yeah. I have never heard that. Shobhadi was my <laughs> oh, really? introduction. I was, oh. I was one of the few people who was allowed to come to the ashram music rooms. I mean, I had a regular lesson in the ashram with Bashabda, who was teaching me sitar. First, Shobhadi used to come to, to Auroville. And she used to teach us uh, with, so we, that time, that was like 95, 96. And then, uh, then when I wanted to learn, uh, um, or maybe even 92, maybe before I went to Germany. And then I came back and I wanted to learn sitar. And she allowed me to learn from Bashupta. So I used to come for years. Every once a week, I would take the bus from Auroville. Uh, there's only one bus a week. So my class was scheduled according to that bus. And then, uh, yeah, I had all these years of, I was so fortunate to have Bashoda teaching me. And so I've always, uh, yeah, and then I have friends in, in Golconde. Amra is a dear friend. And, but there's so many people. And I think also Popo's connection has helped me, you know. He has been with the press because the press brought out his first book, that the, the one on mm -hmm. Ram Dirt is Rural India. And it got the President's Award for the best publication of the year. Like oh. one of the... Yeah, it was a very good public with his sketches and it was very well done in six different languages, yeah, including Tamil and Hindi. And so that was very, so that, there is a connection there as well. No, I, 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 I'm, I haven't been touched by this. 
ashram or a building oh, somehow at all. And it's not in my consciousness and I don't see any, any difference. Um, I just see it as two different things that, that you know, came about by, you know, with Mother and Shabindu. And they have two different roles to fulfill. And, um, and both have their, I mean, I, I like it when I come to the, you know, just the same way the ashram people, when they come to Auroville, for them it's like a big, you know, like a picnic and an adventure, a little bit going somewhere else. It's the same for me when I come and stay in Golkhan. It's a, I, I, I think that's the biggest and the best time I can give to myself instead of traveling anywhere and looking at all these beautiful cities. And I, the best thing I can do is come to Golkhan and stay for a week. Because that's like, that's, that's, there is nothing, you know, there is nothing better. And that building is, is beautiful. And you, there you really see how you can, how a building can, um, can actually uh, radiate um, an atmosphere, you know, it can, it, if what you put into the building can actually, you know, stay there. It's, it's not, it's not just material. It's more than, it's the spirit that's there in the building. And you, you can't but not experience it, I think, you know. So I have a lot of faith. Actually, Golkon has inspired so many people, you know. Like when I talked to Piero, you know, for him, Golkon gave him the strength to, to go on with the work in Matrimandir because when he saw that Golkon could be done with people who were not architects and not, you know, contractors and done by sadhaks, then he got, he felt that, yeah, he could also do Matrimandir. I mean, Matrimandir could be built with people who were not, you know, we didn't have to give it to a contracting company like, you know, big company and people could do it. And that, that's what's so different about Matri Mandir. It's not just the architecture, you know, that's okay. I mean, but the fact that it was built by people, you know, by every Aurovillian, you know, could go and work there. I think that's what makes Matri Mandir different. And still it's going on, you know, people can contribute, go in. So many people are working in Matri Mandir, doing the gardens and this and that, maintenance. I think that's important, you know, that it's not just yeah. something yeah. that is beside. So same with Golkhan, you know, the love and the care with which that building is maintained, it, it talks back to you, you know. So that's that's the power of architecture, actually, you know, <laughs> in the Wonderful. end. <laughs> Mona, it's been an honor to talk oh, with you. No, no, thank thank you. you so much. Thank you, thank you.